Guess who's back from vacation? It's me. That's obvious, right? <laughs> Hi, my name is Sarah, and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. It's official, my channel is at 1,000 subscribers, so just thank you for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing, obviously. And yeah, thank you for allowing me to talk about books even more than I already was, which was a lot. So basically I just talk about books like all the time now. <laughs> so this is also kind of my one year celebration on YouTube, which I think my first video was uploaded on June 26th of 2020. So we're just about at that year mark. Um, and I'm torn between wanting to have this video represent both my thousand subscribers and my year on YouTube, or if I want to do like a different video for that, I don't know, doing like two celebrations in a row seems to be like a bit much. Maybe we can celebrate like 13 months on YouTube <laughs> and I'll do it next month. Yeah, so I guess if you have any ideas for a different way to celebrate that you would like to see, let me know. Otherwise, this, this might just be covering both. So before I jump into these questions, I do have two questions for you, but I'm gonna ask them at the end of this video. So either be sure to watch to the end or there'll also be a timestamp. So if you're too impatient, you have to know what the questions are, then just go there. They're just video related. It's not a big deal. Anyways, <laughs> let's jump into the questions that you guys have asked me. Um, I kind of organize these in a way that I think makes sense as far as like sectioning them into like talking about books or talking about like me personally or my work life and things like that. So for people that asked multiple questions, their questions might be broken out into like different sections. So instead of calling out the person that asked the question as I go through, it's all gonna be in the description. I'm gonna put the list of names for everybody that asked a question. And for anyone that has their own channel, it'll be a link specifically to their channel if you wanna check them out. Okay, so this first section is kind of around travel. So in the video that I mentioned that I was going to be doing a QA. and a I also mentioned that I was about to be going on vacation and I am now of course back from that vacation. Oh, also I do wanna say I am fully vaccinated. I was long before I went on an airplane for the first time and like visited people for the first time since before this whole thing started. So yeah, I was being safe. I was following all CDC guidelines. Please do the same if you're gonna be traveling or seeing people and hopefully we can get to the end of this thing. Sorry, this turned into a PSA. Okay, <laughs> so the first section, travel. Pretty obvious question that came up was where did you go for your vacation? I went to Tucson, Arizona to see my family for the first time in a while uh, and my extended family on my dad's side for the first time in a really long time. So that was wonderful and we had so much fun uh, and then from there i went to fresno to visit a friend who was staying just outside of yosemite national forest and we went hiking every day and that was also great uh, just like incredible views and everything here's a few quick pictures of what what i did or scenery i don't know i haven't chosen them yet all right which is your favorite place for vacation i'm taking this to mean that like of the places you've traveled before, where would you most want to travel back to? And for that, I'm going to say, um, I'd love to go back to Ecuador, specifically the Galapagos Islands. That's one of my favorite trips I've ever done. And it was incredible. So I'd love to do that again. Also Bergen, Norway, amazing. Uh, and Austria, I really loved. I went on like a, just a day trip to Austria while I was in Munich with some friends and I loved it so much and I feel like I only just got a taste of it so I'd like to do like a full trip there. Which part of the US do you live in? I guess these aren't all travel questions. <laughs> these are location related questions. I live in Florida so you can just go ahead and leave all Florida related jokes in the comments. <laughs> Given the opportunity, would you live elsewhere and where would you live? Uh, yes, definitely. We've talked so much about living in different places from places within the US, like North Carolina or uh, Denver, Colorado or Austin, Texas, or basically anywhere to like, what if we were to live somewhere else? And like, how cool would that be? I don't know, probably would stick to English speaking, but yeah, talk about that stuff all the time. 
Um, but obviously there's like a billion things to consider with stuff like that. Literature wise, are there geographical regions you want to explore more of? Yes, there are so many more geographical regions I would want to explore in reading. That's kind of why I did the uh, read around the world video series, if you can call that uh, one video a series. <laughs> I do plan on doing more. It's just that was far more work than I expected. So I just haven't quite gotten to doing more yet, but I do still plan on it. Um, but I would say the region that I most am interested in exploring more of would be like East Asia or actually even just like all of Asia in general. I know that's a very large continent to just be like all of it. Um, but I've really been liking the books that I've been reading that have been translated to English from there or that are set there or that are by authors from there, even if they're not set there. And uh, that might just be my luck, but it's been really good luck so far, so I kind of want to write it out. This section, I think I'm calling it fun facts, but I guess there's like personal information or like more just specifically about me, not about books or anything. Um, so I had the comment to tell us about me and my family. I have no idea specifically um, how to talk about that, but I, uh, my family's great. I have my parents, of course, and then an older brother. That's like my immediate family and they're awesome. Besides that, a lot of my family is spread out over the US. So I see them when I have the opportunity to do so. It's been a while with the exception of the relatives that I just saw. So yeah, I miss them. I'm excited to see them again. I don't know what else to talk about for my family. <laughs> How old are you? I am 28. What are your hobbies other than reading? So much, so many hobbies. Um, I uh, sometimes joke that my hobby is just like collecting hobbies or starting new hobbies, but I, I think I'm just like one of those people that gets really into a thing and then uh, switches it up and does like something different. And I basically have a bunch of hobbies in rotation. Like I'll come back to, to the other hobbies. It's just like, it will take a while because I've got too many and I can only focus on like one at a time. Uh, with that being said, reading is like not just hobby, it's also habit at this point because of the channel and because of I'm just surrounding myself in it all the time. So I love that. I love that I have a hobby that just is always present in my life. Um, but as far as my other hobbies, I uh, really love to play board games. Uh, video games too. I like to do puzzles, whether it's like jigsaw puzzles or like logic puzzles. Um, I do a lot of craft things like crocheting, uh, watercolor painting, sewing. I really like to sew. Uh, oh, I have instruments that sometimes I'll get really into playing and then a lot of times like just go several months without playing. So it's hard to get back into, but yeah, I have a guitar and two ukuleles. But those are the ones that come to mind right away love life. I have a boyfriend of four years and we live together. His name is Curtis and he's great. Here's a picture and another picture because why not? What do you like to do when you hang out with your friends? Uh, so travel, definitely. Uh, I have a lot of friends that are also really into traveling, so that's a lot of fun. I have a book club, so talk about books, I guess. And then also board games. I'm a part of a D&D group. Uh, trivia. I love going to trivia nights. That's probably about like the, the things I most like to do with my friends. What are your favorite movies? Oh, this is tough. Um, so one of my favorite movies of all time is definitely uh, Blues Brothers. It's got great music. It's funny. It's silly and stupid, uh, but also like the cast is incredible. Like not only is there John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd that are the uh, main like stars of the movie, but also James Brown is in it, Aretha Franklin, Carrie Fisher, Ray Charles, like so many big names are in that movie. And there's so much great music besides just what like the Blues Brothers themselves sing. So it's always just really fun to watch. Uh, and then The Prestige is one that like I can always rewatch. So I'm really into a lot of Pixar movies. I love Ratatouille. If I'm like cooking something new for the first time, I like to just have Ratatouille on in the background just for encouragement that anyone can indeed cook. Also, uh, I wanna mention Eighth Grade, which was directed by Bo Burnham and starred 
Elsie Fisher, that movie is incredible and I love it and I watch it too much. <laughs> Um, also, like all Bo Burnham's like stand-ups are really great. So uh, if you haven't seen his stuff, his Netflix specials, definitely watch them. And he just came out with a new one called Inside, where he like entirely filmed it, the special while in lockdown by himself, and it's crazy good. So definitely check that out. What's your favorite wine? I really love this question because it was somebody that was new to the channel, but I was I had a glass of wine while I was like in that video where I asked for questions. Um, so <laughs> smart, smart question to ask. I don't really have a favorite wine. I I guess like as far as taste goes, I prefer drier wines. Uh, if it's white, then crisper. <laughs> It's the best way I can describe it. There are these grapes in Indiana, oddly enough, that are grown in Indiana. They're white grapes and they make like the perfect white wine for like a hot summer day, but I can't remember the name of it. It starts with a T. I'm gonna put it right here. So maybe if I had to pick, that would be my favorite. What do you do for work? I am an instructional designer, which means that I create online classes for uh, people to take and specifically for me I do it for our internal employees for the software company I work for which is a very large company but it's not like as well known as like Google or Amazon or anything I'll like either create classes for somebody to teach themselves so with like the PowerPoints the scripts the um, like walking through the software product to show how to do certain things and all of that. Or I'll create entirely like self-paced classes that somebody can go through on their own and like record the voiceover and everything. And then uh, I also got the question a couple times, what are you studying? Because I mentioned that I am uh, currently going to graduate school to get my master's degree and that degree is also going to be in instructional design so just kind of continuing my learning all right let's get into some bookish opinions what's your current favorite read for 2021 so uh, I think that <laughs> it's no surprise to say at night all blood is black by David Diep but since I've been talking a lot about International Booker and that's probably not, you know, a big shock to you if you watch my videos, then I'll also give an honorable mention to There There by Tommy Orange, which I actually have right here. Uh, this was such a good book. I don't know why I put it off for as long as I did. I think I owned this book for like a year before I read it and it was so good. Uh, this is about a maybe like 12 or 13 indigenous people that are on their all like going to the big Oakland powwow and like how different their lives are and like why they're going and their uh, family lives and home lives and it's it's just it's so good. Oh and I did want to also mention uh, the Decameron Project which was a collection of short stories or is a collection of short stories that are all set during the pandemic this is based off of what the decameron was which was a bunch of short stories like tons of short stories i think like a hundred yes a hundred nested tales it says uh that were written by uh, people that were all sequestered together outside of france during the black death so kind of taking inspiration, I guess, from what came out of that and getting a bunch of well-known authors today to write short stories for this new pandemic. I don't like calling it the new pandemic. That's not a phrase I've used yet, but I'm not a fan. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of great authors in this and it was a fun read. This is actually going to be a part of one of the questions I asked at the end of the video. So I'll wait till then to talk about that. Is there a book genre you don't get along with? Yes, uh, historical fiction. I almost never read it. In addition to that, I'll say uh, YA novels. Not a big fan of young adult. I definitely was like when I was in that prime age group for liking young adult 
but at this point I almost never read it. Oh, also romance. I don't really read a lot of romance. I'm cool with like romance being in a story, but for a whole book to be centered on a romance, it's very rare that I read those. Are there any well-liked slash regarded writers you don't like? Um, this is a great question. And I, it's a hard one because I don't tend to read another book by an author if I don't like the initial book I read by them. For example, like Dave Eggers, I read The Circle by him and really didn't like it, but then I read uh, The Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius as well as a short story collection that he wrote, uh, Why We Were Hungry, I think it's called, under the recommendation of my boyfriend's sister and loved them. So I just like really can't tell <laughs> because if somebody asked me like right after I read The Circle, I would have been like, I guess Dave Eggers, I don't really like him. So the only author that I can think of that I've read more than like one book by and not liked uh, would be John Green, sorry. <laughs> um, and that probably really just falls into, I read him right at the end of being uh, into YA, like into the YA genre in general. He is firmly in that genre. And also I got to this point where I really didn't like teenagers or kids that sound like smarter than even adults or that speak in a way that just doesn't at all sound realistic, but it is set in a realistic world. like. It's like almost too poetic or trying too hard to be quotable and it, it just it's a little cringy for me what author influenced your reading taste the most when you were growing up so especially like to say reading taste because uh, when i was younger i really loved meg cabot who was the author of or who is the author of the i was gonna say vampire diaries <laughs> that's not right the princess diaries so she wrote The Princess Diaries and I never actually read that, but I did read her other like standalone books and I loved those and that really got me into YA to begin with. So I read a ton of books as a result of those books that I read by her, but that hasn't really informed my reading taste today because I no longer read that. Um, I know my first like brush with literary fiction where I really fell in love with it was Life of Pi by Yann Martell. And actually, I can grab that book. This is my very well-loved copy of Life of Pi that I've had since high school. I reread it all the time, and it was the first time that I read a book and discussed it in class and like understood why it could be so helpful to discuss books and why one would discuss the themes of a book and I remember initially being like, this sounds silly. Like, why are we reading this much into this book? Like, this is just a book about a boy and a tiger on a boat. But then like after talking it out, and I think that the themes in this book are very obvious, but to high school me, I didn't see them until we talked about them. And so I think that that really got me into it. That being said, this is the only book that I read by Ian Martell. I do plan on reading more by him, but for now, this is it. So can I really say that he influenced me as a reader? Probably not. So I guess really I just have to go back to who I would consider to be my favorite author if I had to answer a favorite author question, which is Kurt Vonnegut. I first read a book by him the summer after my senior year of high school. So I just graduated and I read Slapstick by him, which I think is widely considered to be his worst book. And I loved it. So when I realized how other people felt about it, I was like, if I loved this book by him, then I've really got to read the books other people love by him. <laughs> and sure enough, I really loved those books like Slaughterhouse Five, Breakfast of Champions, Cat's Cradle. So good. <laughs> so I think that that was the first time that I saw like really weird themes in books and like out there ideas like presented in a way that was so nonchalant and just like, you know, here it is, you do with this what you will. I'm not gonna tell you what to think, but you can use this and come to your own conclusions. And that just, I, I don't know, that did a lot for me. Have you read more or less than starting your channel? I would say more, uh, although I, I know that there was a huge difference between before I learned about BookTube and 
after I learned about it. Like once I started watching YouTube videos that were specific to books and just like all about people reading books and sharing their thoughts, I started reading way more than I was. I would say like two or three times as much as I was at the time. And then when I started my own channel, uh, it probably went up even a little bit more after that. But the huge change was just discovering this place on the internet at all. Do you have any advice for easing into literary fiction? I'm an avid genre fiction, sci-fi fantasy reader and love nonfiction and biographies, but have always struggled with or been disappointed with literary fiction. So tips for literary fiction. I think the biggest and best tip that I can give you is to take your time with it and understand that they are very different than the other books that you're probably reading, especially if you're used to reading more fast paced books. Um, literary fiction needs to be like chewed slowly, I guess is a good way to put it. But I totally understand that it can be tough to get into. I have a hard time with it even now and I clearly like literary fiction. I talk about it the most on my channel. I'm very into the Booker Awards, which are obviously <laughs> about literary fiction. Uh, but I think just like giving it the time it deserves, knowing that you're not going to finish it as fast as your other books and knowing that that's okay. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you like it less, but that there's like other ways to enjoy something that aren't like, oh, I just wanna be doing it all the time. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, in addition to that, I would just suggest trying to find literary fiction books that fit into the genres that you already like. Specifically, if you are more into plot heavy books versus character heavy books or like character driven books, then uh, try to find literary fiction that is more plot forward than character forward because I think that that's a tough thing to find and I think you'll have an easier time with it. I will say that most literary fiction I've come across has been character driven so it's easy to have just been reading those types of books without really thinking about how there could be something different and assuming that like all literary fiction is like that. What is that? It's my frog. So that's where that's been. So I was asked if the Freshly Frog would be making a comeback. And for this one, I can specifically say who asked it because it's the only person that's been asking it since I first showed this frog on my channel, which I think was at uh, 500 subscribers. I think I did a bookshelf tour and this frog was on it. Um, so yeah, this question was asked by Kieran from Katie Books, uh, where I think in the comments of that video, um, he said that it should be how I determine good books, like it gets like the Freshly Frog approval. And I joked about how the number of ribbits it got could be the indicator for like how much I liked it uh, because this frog does indeed ribbit. <laughs> um, my dad got it for me from Germany, so I love it. But I'm so sorry, Kieran, that I mentioned that like six or so months ago and it has yet to come back onto the channel even though we've talked about it several times since then uh so i'm thinking maybe for booker 2021 that'll be the frog's debut for reviewing books so this takes us into a few questions about my videos or, or slash channel in general so uh, one question that i got was how do you arrange everything for your videos uh, this was such a sweet comment too, like the entire comment was very sweet, so thank you so much. But if you've seen my review videos and you know that I break down my reviews of books by themes or by general like ideas about the books, it could be like a specific passage and like a theme just to that one passage or it could be like a theme running throughout the book. Um, so I would say that the way I go about it, like some books kind of just the themes, I guess, will just really jump out at you. Like that's what happened for Burnt Sugar, which ended up being the first of those videos that I did. And it just felt natural to do it in that way. But now if I know that I'm going to be doing a review style video on just a single book, then I'll read through it. And if I come across uh, something 
interesting or something that sticks out a bit to me like more than once like the first time I run across it I might think like oh that's cool or different or whatever but if I read about that same thing a little bit later then I might tab that area and start tabbing any area that mentions that thing again later and sometimes it ends up to be nothing or it doesn't seem like it's anything by the end of the book while other times it seems like oh I, I think I've really found something here that the author intended to have running throughout the book and I definitely want to talk about it. So I would say that that's generally what I do. A lot of the things, like I said, kind of jump out at me, um, but sometimes it does feel a little bit more like digging. And I feel like I usually know by about 50 pages in the book if I'm going to have to dig for those themes or if they're just gonna be like super present and obvious to me. That being said, I'm sure I'm not always right about the themes, but uh, for me, it's my reading experience and I like sharing it in that format. Um, and then once I go through that process of like reading the book, that's when I'll start watching other people's reviews on that book. Uh, once I've like formed my own opinion because I'm done reading it, then I like to see what other people said about it, make sure there's nothing glaringly obvious that I just like completely missed for some reason, which has totally happened before. Um, and then also I like to read articles online with the author, uh, either specifically about the book or just with the author in general about their writing career. How will you take on the 2022 Booker International Prize? As in which lists will you consider, long list, short list, etc. And then they go on to say, I found reading through all six books on the short list in six weeks a challenge. Did you do that? No, <laughs> I'm still reading In Memory of Memory. I am this close to halfway. The beginning of In Memory of Memory is going to feel like a memory of my memory by the time I'm to the end of it. But I did read the other five books by the time the shortlist was announced. Uh, to be fair, I think I'd like started and or finished like two to three of them when the shortlist was announced because I was just pretty lucky with the books that I had available to me and decided to start reading. Uh, but yeah, I didn't <laughs> read them that quickly. As far as my plans for future Booker Awards, I'll start with saying for Booker 2021, I plan at this point on reading all of the long list again, like I did last year. Uh, that was just so much fun and hopefully I can do it a little bit quicker than I did last year. As for the International Booker 2022, I, at this point, I'll still probably just say that I'll be doing the short list, but I could see myself changing my mind to the long list. In fact, I'm like just about there, but I just don't wanna make that promise until I'm like 100% sure. And in addition to that question, uh, how, do you, how do you get the books in the US? Some are not widely available here in the States. Uh, and they go on to say, I like to support my local independent bookstore, but will buy from Amazon if I can't get the books otherwise totally understand that struggle uh for the international prize it wasn't that hard for me this year although i didn't try to get all of the books from the long list i think that the most difficult one was the employees which i thought i couldn't buy initially but it turned out that i could and really it was just that it took a while to get to me um, fortunately my library had quite a few of the books that were on the list so i didn't have that hard of a time for that but for the Booker Awards last year, I did have a hard time with that one. It took me forever to get who they was. I think I got it like right before the shortlist was announced. Burnt Sugar, I could only get on Audible as an audiobook, So that's how I read it the first time. Uh, but now I have two copies of it. <laughs> I have one that's uh, under the title The Girl in White Cotton and one that's under the title Burnt Sugar. And technically the endings do differ a little bit, which is kind of cool, in case you didn't know. It's very slight. <laughs> Basically what I do is first I look at my library to see what books are available, if any, rent them from there, uh, especially if books were first published in the US and then were published in the UK, so maybe they've been around here longer before they were eligible to even be on the Booker list so yeah it can be a, a struggle as far as like the whole independent bookstore discussion goes that is like a really tough one i don't even have like an independent bookstore all that close to me i do have one that's like a 30 minute drive so it's not terrible or anything but it's not even where like any of my friends live it's where i used to live um and besides that it's like a lot of barnes and noble 
but what I do is uh, after looking at the library, I look at Better World Books. Um, which doesn't really help you with like booker books, but will help you if you're just like looking for books in general, especially if they've been out for a long time. So they're a site that I like to use. Uh, and then also I'll do, <laughs> I'll look at the book on Amazon and then you know where it says like that, the used section, and you can see all the retailers that are selling the book used through Amazon. Uh, I'll take their name and just like Google the name of that retailer and see if they have a website of their own that I can buy from that wouldn't be going through Amazon. So I know that like Amazon wouldn't be getting a part of that money for it, but that instead it would be going entirely to the that retailer specifically, like that thrifted book retailer, which is probably not foolproof. I'm sure some of those companies aren't great either, uh, but you know, at least it's like a little something that you can do. So yeah. And then if all else fails, I'll get it from Amazon. Okay. So that was all of the questions. So now I just have two questions for you guys before I close out this video slash celebration. Um, so the first, these are both video related questions. One video I'm thinking about making the other video I kind of have made already, but haven't edited. I just want to ask if it's something that you would be interested in because I honestly don't know. Um, the first is a wrap up or like an all inclusive uh, video about my experience reading and then just like all the books in general from Booker 2020 because I did end up reading all of the books that were on that list and I haven't talked about all of the books on that list. So would you want like a full video? Because I was doing in my reviews, I was ranking the books against each other about like with my personal opinion, what I felt was my favorite to least favorite of those. And so I could do like a full ranking of those things like that. Um, but I don't know, is it too late for that? It's, it's been a bit, we're nearly at the next Booker Awards. So it feels a little late. But let me know if you would be interested still in seeing that video. Um, and then it would be easy for me to film because I've already done all the work for it. I already read the books. Uh, and then also regarding the Decameron project, which I talked about for one of the questions in this video, uh, I read this, I, I did a one story a day for 29 days leading up to when I would officially be considered fully vaccinated, that being two weeks after my second vaccination shot. And I filmed my opinion about each of the short stories in this, but it was in peak international booker time. So anytime I had to be like editing or anything, I put into international booker. Uh, because I knew that I was just crazy busy anyways, so it would be tough to do that and then also edit this at some point and get this out, knowing it as well that this would take a lot of editing since it's 29 clips at least. So that's it, this is another one of the situations like, is it too late? Is this a video you'd want to see? My thoughts on each of these stories throughout this? Yeah, let, let me know. Anyways. <laughs> That brings me to the end of this celebration video. Uh, so once again, thank you so much for watching and subscribing to the channel. Thank you if you sent in a question and I guess that's it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, and if you liked this video, then consider subscribing, of course, and I will see you in the next one and the next one and the next one for another year on YouTube and hopefully another thousand subscribers and all that good stuff. <laughs> Bye.